This might sound a little bit like Groundhog Day. I'm joined by Terrence McKinney, and we are talking about a fight with Ferris ZM coming up here at UFC Fight Night, only this time it's on February 26th. Terrence McKinney back here on the program. Terrence, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. Cam's good. The weight's coming off perfectly, and I'm excited to compete in two weeks. Yeah, so people didn't get my dad joke right off the top. I am a dad, so I'm allowed to get away with it. Uh, you were supposed to fight uh, Ferris in uh, in November, of course. It was one of your cornermen, I believe, who got COVID. Uh, what exactly happened there for people who might not remember? Uh, well, I guess one of my one of my corners tested positive uh, for COVID, and so like since I didn't have the vaccine, the fight was canceled. Gotcha. Okay, that that's crazy. And and were you trying to uh, get that fight booked a little bit sooner? Because I know that was in November. We're talking about February. Was it just that the cards were filling up, or what happened there? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just assuming that no one was really trying to take the fight. I guess I don't know. I threw my name out there, but Ferris was still down to do it, so got pushed out a little bit later than I wanted. But the goal still remains the same. Yeah. No. No. I agree. Were there any other opponents offered at the time, or was this always the fight they were trying to make? I guess it's the fight they're trying to make, but I told them I'll fight anyone. I don't care if it's fair. I was going to say, man, you're Mr. MMA Twitter. I figured they would have taken notice of that. Like, hey, we want to get this guy back here in, in here as soon as we can, right? I'm going to fight in on that December card, but, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, you know, obviously we talked last time about uh, the matchup and everything. What, you know, because it's been a bit since we've seen you in the cage. Is there anything in particular you feel like you've improved on since the last time we saw you? I know you're, uh, you know, working on everything, but is there one thing maybe you're looking to showcase in this fight? Uh, just how I'm a well-rounded mixed martial artist, you know, maybe they'll get to see some of my wrestling, grappling, mm -hmm. uh, just see just the evolution of my game, just with elbows, knees, just mixing it up. And is that kind of the silver lining here is that you've had more time for this fight and you can kind of work on your skills a little bit more? Cause man, you're still a young guy like you, I, I'm sure every day you're learning more when it comes to the, you know, the lifestyle of a martial artist. Yeah, because I'm fairly new to the sport. I'm on my fifth year into it, going on to, to my fifth year. So, like, it's just the opportunity or endless right now. I just every day, every day I feel like I'm learning something. I'm getting better. And I know we talked about this last time, and I even brought it up in this interview. Uh, you're one of the most popular guys I see on social media, on Twitter. Uh, how important is that for you to just, you know, be around the fans? And I'm sure you've noticed as well that, like, you know, just the people are just becoming more fans of you because you're so accessible. Yeah, exactly, because I, I don't want to just be known as a fighter. I want to be known as, like, a brother, not to everyone, you know, because, like, I believe we're we're all a family, you know, and that's how God would like it to be. Like, treat your neighbor as you're, like, yourself treated, and that's just kind of what I grew up on. So, like, I won't, you guys show me love, just know you're going to get it right back because mom always taught me respect isn't earned. It's, it's not given, but it's earned. Yeah, no, no, I agree with that. Is that something you've spoken to your management about, about how, you know, your brand, like you've really done a good job of getting it out there. Like, I think like every like story or post or something, I'm always seeing something about you on there. Or you're always giving your opinion. Have you, is that something you've spoken to your management about? Uh, it's something uh, I spoke on to my management. I just want to get my name out there, do more than just fighting, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just use this platform just to the best of my ability. You know, like I tell people, I want to be a champion on and off the mat. And, and I think you're doing that, man. Like how many people and, you know, people I'm sure know your story and your background and everything. How, how often do you get fans hitting you up about that part of your life, about overcoming adversity and, you know, being a success like you are right now? I'm sure you're getting that even even daily. Yeah, uh, people hit me up all the time and I always it just feels good. Like I get to give these people encouragement, man. And if I like I tell people, if I can share my story and it can help one person. That's all that matters to me. And that's huge. You know, if I can help someone heal and get their breakthrough like I got and now you got to get to see me reaping the blessings you know the breakthrough and, and I want them to see that as well so whatever I can do to give them the extra boost I want to be here for them let's talk about this matchup uh Ferris we talked about him there 12 and 3 record uh just style wise how are you looking at this fight um I know he's very technical he has great kicks you know if you let him get in his rhythm he'll pick you apart but I know once pressure comes or if he doesn't get if he gets his too hard, I I see like he really doesn't doesn't like that at all. Yeah. No, I I agree with you there. Uh training camp, how's that? How's everything going leading into the fight? And who you mainly been working with as far as training partners? Um, uh, I mix it up uh with everybody. It don't matter. This new guy Nicholas, he's tall, 
We got just got another guy, Caleb Jensen. I was working with Ken Beverly, who you guys just got a win at FAC 12, which this fight, I think, was the fight of the night on that card. It was insane. Uh, I got um, the, Ho the Jose Mendez, Eric Mendez. Like, I get different looks every day. And like I said, without my team, none of this is possible. That's why I say we, we're about to go to work on February 26th because, like I tell people, it takes an army to win a war. What's it like being part of these, you know, a lot of these names that you're mentioning, they're all up and comers, Beverly, especially as well, too, kind of like yourself. Uh, what's it like to be a part of that? Because, you know, we hear of all these big gyms and these, you know, no, like, you know, like an ATT, for example, you hear all these big names, but like that could be your gym someday. You know what I mean? Like a gym, like, like household names. What's it like being a part of that, of, of sort of rising together as a team? Um, it's just good because I can see God not only blessing me, but the people around me. And it just, it's just amazing to see, like, like I tell people like you're my brother like like if if I didn't help you guys succeed and get to the same pinnacle as me like we didn't do it right yeah I love it love it man love that mentality uh weight cut gotta ask how's everything going ahead of the fight we're you know what a week or two away um everything's good but I did put on a little bit more muscle this camp so um I'm I won't get the job done because that's just who I'm a wrestler that I know it's, it's gonna suck <laughs> yeah, I know it's never fun. Are you, are you doing like meal prep or anything, or do you have like a nutritionist, or are you just doing it by yeah, yourself? I kind of send me meals, and I I got everything taken care of on, on this end. So like like I said, God's just been blessed me. Everything's just been lining right up. Yeah. And that's awesome, man. Like, you know, it's one less thing you have to worry about if you have someone, you know, doing the meals, like, I don't know, some fighters do it, you know, cook on their own. Cause like, where do you find the time? Right. It's, it's always, always takes a bit of time to prep. <laughs> Man, I'd be too exhausted to kick after I train, man. Yeah. Cause like I tell, I'm putting my heart and soul out there, you know. Like you guys putting everything at risk. Like I, I'm gonna give you guys my all. I feel like, like Goku, you know. Yeah. Without the crowd, I'm like they give me that spirit bomb. I love them, and I think about all of them. I feel it out there to support, and I'm ready to leave it all out there on the mat. Like no matter what, just know it's just gonna be a show, win or lose. Like you're gonna know, like. I put my heart and soul out there. That's why I, when people ask me, were you sad? I said, no, because I know I did everything to the best of my ability out there to win. Like, I have nothing to be ashamed of. Like, I, I was in the best shape. I gave him my all, win or lose. Like, I'm going to be grateful. I got to address the t-shirt. I'm a huge graphic tee guy, so love the shirt. We talked about this off air a little bit. How many compliments do you get on that shirt? Because that's that, that stands <laughs> out with the color and everything, man. It looks awesome. I'm, I'm all about it. <laughs> yeah, I always have, like, the anime shirts. People love it, man. I just like anime, you know. It's always been my thing. Yeah, I, I love like those like fighting style shirts like Dragon Ball Z or like Street Fighter. Like I have a lot of video game t-shirts because like, yeah. I know they're cool. And it's funny, like I'll get compliments all the time from like other guys. My wife doesn't like me wearing them because it's like, you know, I'm an older guy. I should be like, you know, <laughs> dressing up accordingly. But I'm like, like, I, I think it's cool. Like I'm all about that stuff, right? Like I grew up playing like Street Fighter and, you know, seeing like Dragon Ball Z and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm all about it, man. I think it's cool. So there you go. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about your corner. Who's going to be making the trip with you? Anything different there? Or same corner, man. Uh, some things are different. I'm bringing in Brian McDowell so I can have a workout partner. Ferris is height the whole time I'm there. And I'm bringing my coach Pablo. And then I'll have Jason House in there, who's I really, my, my manager. So like, it's, it's going to be it's going to be great. I always have the, the best team there I can ask for. Yeah, and Jason trains too, so he's pretty familiar with everything. And I know he's cornered some of his other fighters that he works with as well. So. He actually knows the game, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah, he's great. How do you envision the fight playing out on February 26th? Um, you guys know what I'm coming with. I'm going for the first round knockout. I know he don't like to get hit. And I know if I see him, fear in his eyes, like he didn't like it, he's getting ate up right away. Um, be um, I'm like a shark in the water, a little little pit bull. When I see hey, it's it's time, yeah. and you guys you guys gonna see it. I see, I already seen him in his eyes before, so I know, I know, I know what's gonna happen in February, and I know I'm walking out there with God, and no one can stand against me. So I imagine since you've had a bit of a gap in between fights, not your fault, obviously, but uh, is the plan to just you know try and be as active as you can this year? Is that kind of one of your goals this year? Yes, sir. I want to get at least three more fights after this and be top 10 in UFC by the time the year ends. 
Love it. Love it. You didn't even hesitate with that. Um, one other thing, uh, we're going to take a sharp turn here. I know you uh, spoke out publicly about uh, Joe Rogan. Obviously, there's a ton of controversy going out, going around with him. I wanted to start first with what compelled you to do that uh, in terms of supporting him? Because you didn't have to. I mean, a lot of fighters are not speaking out. I just felt it was the right thing because I know we all been with our homies and said some racist jokes. And like, oh, I don't know, I heard that. You know, we all say different stuff, you know. But as long as, like, you're a real man and owned up, like, uh, I probably shouldn't have said that and apologize, like, I respect you. And I just know for a fact, I, I've experienced racism, I've seen it, and I know he's not that. Like, he wasn't even coming out in the fights when I made my debut, but he came out to give me praise because he saw what an excellent performance I did. Like, if, if a racist wouldn't do that, no matter what, you know? If they don't like like that, like our race, he would not have did that. And that just speaks in itself right there. How have you dealt with the negativity? Because I'm sure, you know, whenever you mention Joe Rogan or anything like like this, this because this is like beyond fighting, right? Like this is like in politics, this whole thing with Rogan. Like, how have you dealt with the negativity? Because you're a pretty positive guy, but I'm sure you've been getting a lot of bad feedback, too. Yeah, it's 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 nothing I haven't experienced before, man. Like. I was on the news looking like a crackhead, you know. There's nothing anyone can do to phase me, you know. I already experienced the worst of the worst and the best of the best, you know. Uh, I'm on phase, you know. Yeah, no, very well said, man. And I, I got to ask as well, uh, are there a lot of fighters messaging you in private saying, hey, good for you speaking up? Because I know there's a lot of people who are afraid to speak out because this is such, they don't want the hassle of like what I'm sure you've had of people, you know, DMing them, threatening them, all this stuff, because it's a very, like I said, a hot button issue. Yeah, a uh, couple fighters slid up on the post and, and it was cool to see uh, them seeing, seeing what I see and getting behind it, you know, and Everyone has their opinion. I respect their in the same way they should respect mine. Before we get out of here, uh, downtime. What's that looking like right now? Are you watching any TV? I know you watch anime and stuff. What, what, uh, what yeah. else you been up to as far as uh, outside of training? What have you, what have you been up to? I, I watched the uh, Rick and Morty season five. Other than that, I just be playing 2K or or Fortnite. I just be chilling, just relaxing. Right now, I'm trying to just stay at the crib the fight's closed not trying to get too many interactions but yeah. i got i'm about to be doing this event at the fairchild base because like i said you guys like this ain't just for the media i just love the event you know i'm all about that so love i'm it. just getting for that uh next week who's your team in 2k um i love the bucks bucks okay what any, any particular reason giannis or is there is any other the game they just i swear they're untouchable Okay, because I was gonna say if they if, if you could play the Sonics, would you would you play? Because you know Washington State, I, I don't know if you would, would have been a fan of them. I I think yeah. they got screwed out of a franchise personally. Like it, it it was it was terrible, man. Yeah, that'd be cool if we still had the Seattle Super Sonics. That'd be hard. I would I I'm I, you know what I think there 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 could be something there, right? Because they got the NHL team now and they got a decent arena. Maybe maybe we'll see basketball back there. Because I don't know. We'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see soon. Yeah, I hope so. I because I I'm from Vancouver. I'm not that far away from you in in Canada, and we lost the Grizzlies. And the you know when the Grizzlies left, it was like okay, I'll cheer for Seattle. They're only three hours away, and then they yeah. left too. So it's kind of sucked for me. So I I don't even have a team right now. Like the Raptors, sure, good for them, but I don't know. It's like I live here, so it's like I should support the team that's closest, right? So yeah, yeah. At least they got they got a title not too long ago. That's true. And then a lot of people said that wasn't going to happen. And uh, it's so good to see you back in action, man. We're excited. UFC Fight Night, February 26th. If there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last word. Okay. I'll, uh, you guys can follow me at TRX155 on my Twitter and Instagram. Uh, TRX95 on my TikTok. And you guys look out for my YouTube channel coming soon. Reckless is going to be live. Uh, shout out to Irene Sports Agency. Shout out to Warrior Camp, my whole family, and, and Pablo Alfonso. And shout out to my family, Star Johnson, Tony Jones, and my brothers and sisters. And most importantly, shout out to God. You know, none of this would be in place without him.